Is there anything better than a killer opening sequence to get an audience going? Maybe it's the still electrifying late night swim which opens Steven Spielberg's iconic great white blockbuster Jaws, all moonlight and that unforgettable score. Maybe it's the daring POV style killing which starts the carnage of John Carpenter's Halloween, with its vintage synth score and shaky verisimilitude. Maybe it's that great bit in Lake Placid where a world weary Brendan Gleeson sees some guy get torn in two by a massive crocodile. In any case, the answer is yes. Yes, there is something better than a killer opening sequence, and that is a great movie. After all, there's nothing worse than the sinking realisation that nothing else in a flick is going to live up to its dynamite opening. It's uniquely disheartening, the crushing moment when an incredible opening sequence ends and the audience slowly starts to see that the otherwise unforgettable feature film could as easily been cut down to a great short. With that disappointment in mind, we here at What Culture have opted to collate a list of movies which are well worth watching for their great opening scenes and nothing after that. I am Kirsten from What Culture and these are 12 movies you can stop watching after the opening scene. Number 12, Ghost Ship. Okay, so by now this film is pretty famous for consisting of a great opening scene and almost no other redeeming qualities. But damn, if said opening sequence isn't great enough to be worth spotlighting once more. The film itself is an extremely lame and predictable C-set supernatural thriller, which follows a miscast Gabriel Byrne and his swarthy crew of salvagers as they come across the eponymous spirit-filled cruise liner and are besieged by said spirits in short order. Showcasing the worst aspects of early 2000s horror, the film boasts both uninspired CG ghouls and a molasses slow plot, leaving little reason to recommend it to anyone. Except, that is, for its standout opening scene, wherein a nefarious plot sees an entire deck's worth of passengers bisected in gory detail on screen when a vital and seriously sharp cord is cut by our evil villain. What follows is an insanely gruesome sequence dropped in from a far more daring film, as future star Emily Browning is left screaming amongst the piles of halved adults surrounding surrounding her. Number 11, Snake Eyes. Scarface director Brian De Palma is an inconsistent talent to be put politely. At his best, the helmet calls to mind Hitchcock in his unparalleled execution of tension and his deft touch with potentially exploitative material. At his worst, he's the man who made 2002's embarrassingly misjudged dud femme fatale. So, in conclusion, the Carey director's career is a land of contrast, but even his most ardent defenders would find little to prize in 1997's bland conspiracy flick Snake Eyes, a rare film which manages to make 90s Nick Cage boring. That said, even the harshest hater would have to concede that the film's opening tracking shot, a blistering 14-minute unbroken take which takes us behind the scenes at a Vegas boxing match, is an unparalleled technical achievement which blows even Scorsese's Copacabana Barna sequence in Goodfellas out of the water. The sequence winds through buildings and around a large cast, constantly keeping the audience guessing how long the director can pull this trick off for. Shame it's stuck in such an otherwise lame movie mind. Number 10, Friday the 13th. This Platinum Dunes reboot of the Jason Voorhees starring franchise pulls off a neat trick with its pair of nested openings. Not only does the first brief monochrome sequence effectively recap the first film in the series in 30 or so seconds, Miss Voorhees off some counsellors for her offing her son before being off by one of them. The second, more luxuriously paced opening introduces us to a small group of slasher movie victims, the stone slacker, the sex-mad young couple and their marginally more sensible seeming counterparts, only to kill them off so fast there's no need to watch the rest of the film. Yes, from an inexplicable cameo from Night Ranger's 80s hit Sister Christian to a string of quick, gory and inventive kills, the opening 20 minutes of this remake act as perfect self-contained Jason Voorhees outing all on his own. Now you can save yourself an hour of watching Supernatural star slash worst Gilmore Girl love interest Jared Padalecki and Disney Channel exile Danielle Panabaker attempt chemistry to a backdrop of lesser murders. You're welcome. Number 9, Belly. As far as feature filmmakers go, Hype Williams is one of the best music video directors to ever live. The hip-hop legend shot unforgettable promos for artists as diverse as TLC and DMX throughout the 90s, lensing killer videos for the likes of Method Man, Busta Rhymes and even the notorious B.I.G. before broadening his horizons in the new millennium and working with Christina Aguilera, Nelly Furtado and Beyonce at the height of their respective careers. That said, the best thing we can say about 1998's crime thriller Belly is that Williams 
debut feature looks and feels like a 90 minute music video. Unfortunately, that's not a good thing. Despite a pair of great central turns from NAS and DMX, the film suffers from an overcomplicated plot and an excessive style over substance. But what style it is, with the film's slick neo-noir aesthetic never better encapsulated than in its ice-cool opening sequence, a neon-lit crawl through a nightclub which drips with effortless finesse. Number 8. Troy the perfect storm director Wolfgang Peterson isn't a man to do things by halves. When the Poseidon Helmer put together a once-in-a-lifetime cast to film an epic set during the legendary Trojan War and adapted from Homer's Iliad, he spent over 180 million on the flick, ensuring the result would be bigger in scale than even Ridley Scott's Gladiator. And the film was massive! Unfortunately, not unlike Oliver Stone's Alexander the same year, the director neglected to make it any good. Whilst not terrible, there's nothing much memorable about the huge epic, and few, if any, of its megawatt stars succeed in making much of an impression. What does make an impression is the film's first scene, the only one most viewers will recall, wherein Brad Pitt's cool as a cucumber Achilles dispatches a cameoing Nathan Jones of WWE fame via an unbelievably slick spear manoeuvre which, unlike the surrounding film, needs to be seen to be believed. Number 7. Vanilla Sky do you ever wonder whether almost famous director Cameron Crowe regrets dropping a huge chunk of this pseudo-philosophical Tom Cruise vehicle's sizeable budget on clearing out the real Times Square for the film's unforgettable opening sequence? You know, given the fact that Brit Helmer Danny Boyle achieved the same effect in the opening of his horror 28 days later by just filming London at 5am before anyone was awake. Fully as it may have been, maybe New Yorkers are early risers, there's no denying that the first scenes of this trippy psychodrama are its most memorable images as a distraught cruise wanders through the abandoned city, disoriented and in awe. Of course, this is all eventually in aid of a sub-Jacob's Ladder-style twist revealed approximately five hours of tepid romance subplots later, but still, it's an undeniably killer opening. Number 6. Lord of War of all the films listed here, there's no faulting this one for ambition. Moving from bleak black comedy to a more sombre and dramatic depiction of the very real and very brutal arms trade, Lord of War sees star Nicolas Cage play an immoral gun merchant who grows a conscience at the exact worst moment. The film manages to take a few effective satirical swipes at the industry, but coming out in the years after America's invasion of Iraq, the flick was too unfocused to hit hard and was largely forgotten soon after its 2005 release. What was not so soon forgotten was the movie's insane opening sequence, an immersive sequence which borrows from David O. Russell's earlier Three Kings to show us the life cycle of a bullet from creation to its eventual, uh, execution, as it were. It's a thrilling and ultimately harrowing sequence which marries impressive effects and a devastating denouement better than anything else in the surrounding film. Number 5. When a Stranger Calls no, not the infamous 2006 remake from Con Air director Simon West, How the Mighty Fall. That PG-13 remix managed to sanitise even the brief pre-credits kill of this 1979 original. No, we mean the Carol Kane starring Proto Slasher, released only a year after John Carpenter's Halloween gave the burgeoning subgenre some serious mainstream exposure. Incredibly enough, for an otherwise run-of-the-mill thriller, the opening scene of When a Stranger Calls can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Halloween's iconic opening sequence in terms of incredibly tense, unforgettable horror scenes, and the movie's first frames were so effective that they even provide the basis for Wes Craven's legendary pre credit sequel in 1996's Scream. It's a shame nothing else in the flick lives up to these 12 minutes, but the scene nonetheless deserves a place in horror history as an absurdly influential standalone sequence, with homages to the scene cropping up as recently as 2013's indie horror hit All Hallows Eve. Number 4. Swordfish some would argue that this techno thriller is also worth watching for John Travolta's absurd villainous performance and slash or Halle Berry's unexpected nude scene, but the former is done better in 2010's From Paris with Love and the same year's Battlefield Earth, whilst the latter appears in a far better film if you're willing to revisit the intense emotional workout of Monsters Ball. As such, the only thing to recommend about this corny early vehicle for Hugh Jackman is the film's insanely cool opening scene, a sequence which has somehow retained its appeal all these years later despite relying on some dated CGI in its execution. Taking The Matrix's then revolutionary bullet time gimmick to its logical conclusion, Swordfish starts with an incredible slow motion sequence which freezes time around an explosion to incredible effect, as Travolta explains his plan for a violently ambitious heist via voiceover. Number 3. The Happening 
poor M. Night Shyamalan. Whenever it seems as if the infamous Split director might be making a comeback, he seems to be hobbled by the karma of plagiarising R. L. Stein's goosebumps to create his most enduringly popular hit, The Sixth Sense. Sure, 2004's The Village may have been dismissed by both critics and audiences due to its inane twist, but 2006's Lady in the Water was a return to form, right? Shaw and Shyamalan followed up this low-budget Spielbergian story with an intense sci-fi mystery whose opening scene left viewers blown away. Depicting a group of seemingly normal civilians suddenly committing violent acts of self-harm and suicide a propos of nothing, the sequence was a nightmare of epic proportions, comparable to the famous opening of Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead but somehow scarier for its dissonant sense of tranquility. Killer opening. If only the film didn't go on to explain that the rhododendron was the unseen mastermind behind this planet-wide bloodbath. Number 2, 28 Weeks Later Ok, so this one isn't necessarily utterly unwatchable, unlike some of the titles appearing on this list, but like Troy and Watchmen, it's hard to deny that this otherwise pretty forgettable flick definitely does peak within its first few minutes, starring ravenous main man Robert Carlyle as a family man hit hard by the worldwide rage virus pandemic. The movie opens up on him holing up with his family in an isolated farmhouse, only for his loved ones to be immediately and brutally dispatched by the not technically zombie zombies, in short all Order as he bolts. The insanely bleak opening gives its predecessor's iconic opening sequence a run for its money, and can stand shoulder to shoulder with Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead remake and Zombieland's hilarious musical montage in the leagues of unforgettable zombie openers, even though nothing else offered by the dark sci-fi horror really lives up to the potential of this gruelling scene. Number 1. Watchmen well, it had to happen. We've mentioned the opening sequence to Batman vs Superman Helmer slash universally beloved filmmaker Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead remake more times than any other opening scene in this article. So obviously we had to include his 2009 adaption of Alan Moore's notoriously complex graphic novel Watchmen. Ok, yes, sure, we could have included Dawn of the Dead, but for what it is, a kinetic reboot of the zombie franchise focused more on the pulse-pounding and gory than the thoughtful socio-political allegory. The movie isn't bad as a whole. The same can't be said for the ambitious but ultimately po-faced and tonally inconsistent Watchmen, a film which would be improved by turning it off after the opening credits. But what phenomenal credits they are! Compressing almost a century of alternative history into a few minutes, the Bob Dylan soundtrack sequence is more daring than anything offered by Lindelof's overrated recent TV adaptation, including the most strikingly explicit recreation of the Zapruder film ever committed to film. And that's our list. What's a movie that you can't watch past the opening sequence? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. But for now, I've been Kirsten from What Culture, and I'll see you in the next one.